everyone welcome back in this video we will learn how we can you know authenticate the user using identity server in case of multi-tenant so if i talk about the last video in the last video we learn how i mean all about like the multi-tenant uh, architecture all right so let's see so this is the same code which i have already explained in the like a couple of videos when i was explaining the identity server for demo okay so there is not any i mean there is not much change in this so if you want to see how to you know load the users from the db then you can check it out that video i'll put the link in the description by the way so there 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 is no change i mostly added something called tenant service and the user management persistence so what these two things will do so whenever anybody is trying to you know uh, try to authenticate using this identity server then there is a method inside user detail service which will be get called okay so what this method will do it will check whether the user is from a master db or a user is from a tenant db depending on that it will load the user from the db and then create you know create a token and return to the the caller that is this much the limitation is this much and the user uh, management service is just the repository uh, layer so where you, if you can see uh, there is something called master db tenant and master db user similarly so if user is a default i mean like the you know application user then it will be in the master db if the user belongs to any particular tenant then we have to use this repository and depending on it will make a connection to that particular db and then load that uh, that user this much only all right so let me show you db as well first so by default you can see there is a default db which the name is infinite pc underscore master db and if you check the startup of this solution yeah it's over here you can see the same i mentioned over here so that means this is a default setting related to tenant configuration and the users default users will be in the master db then we should create tenants and then user inside the tenant these things we will be doing in the coming videos also if you i go back to the architecture so i am talking about this layer right now and the default users will be in the master db which is nothing of this 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 guy and the other respective users which is belonging to the any particular db so it will be here or here right and for the client app we are will be using the postman for now all right let me run that identity server solution first and i have added a debugger in the user detail service also okay let me try to copy a default admin which is a default user from a master db let me try to authenticate it's taking time to load okay redis connection failed. okay okay i'm my mistake so what i did actually if you see in this uh, identity server it's you know taking the connection strength of the tenant information i mean tenant information from the redis so the redis i have not started that is why you are getting that uh, you, you have seen this error is coming let me close this one and let me start this redis so for this i need to use docker so since i have is i'm running everything in a windows machine that's why i have installed docker toolbox and there i have downloaded the redis image on that also i have created a video i'll put the link in the description if you want to check it out check it out it sometime it takes some uh, close to 5 to 10 seconds to load so we have to wait for that much time at least and then meanwhile i'll just stop this because i have to rerun again because it's trying to you know connect to this IP, which is a default uh, Docker machine IP, which is like 192.168.99.101. Obviously, you will be loading these two from app, app setting, but just for the demo purpose, I'm you know putting over here in the code itself. Let it load. If you want to see check the configuration of this machine you can use this command i'll show you in just a bit once this is completely loaded anyway you can see the default uh, ip of this machine i mean docker machine is 192.168.99.101 
which is same if you can see over here all right and it's still uh, uh, doing something okay so now the docker is up and running and the default ip is over here 192.168.99.101 now let me check if there are images so you can see there is one image which is i have already downloaded like a name is radish let me see whether it's already you know in a running uh, or it's not running let me check that for that there is a command ps hyphen a and you can see it is exited okay so i need to run this start in the container id i have to get let me check whether it's running now so you can see now it's up two seconds ago all right so the docker is up and running let me restart this machine i mean to set this uh, identity server code So if I go back to the architecture again, so our ready service is running, identity server is running, and now we'll try to you know put the default username which is super admin. By default, whenever you install, it will be having one user for sure. So that user information we will try to use it from the postman and try to connect to the identity server. If the user belongs to that, there we are checking whether the user is a default user. I mean to say default application admin users or a tenant user using the domain uh, name and in that we will be checking whether the information is already there in the reddish cache or not if it's not then it will directly hit the master db otherwise it will take it from the reddish cache itself that is what we will be showing you right now all right so this is up and running let me double check okay identity servers are running let me copy the username again so this admin infinite poc.com that's the email id and the password is admin okay so let's go back to the postman clear cookie this is the email id and i'll type admin now observe this method is called with that same email id now what i am doing if you see here let me zoom a little bit you can see i'm checking so i'm taking the domain name which is coming as infinite poc and that's a default domain name actually so that means it's not a an end user so what i am doing now i am going to the master db which i explained you over here which is nothing but this master db user information so there we will check whether the user is there or not so it will take it from the db and since the user is there we got the db user and you can see the user is loaded here is all the information and we'll just create a token and return it to the uh, the caller let me release this control and go back to the postman and you can see it's authenticated and we got the token actually this is the token this is the token for the default user now what i'll do and manually create this uh, i'll just delete this token now for now and delete this also from here okay so if you go back to a db and see the tenant i have manually created i'll be creating a separate application on that how to create users also in the db and the tenant as well as the tenant users so this master db is only holding the information of tenant so if you double click on that this is a default tenant i have created and the company name is um, you can see xyz limited one two three and this is the connection history and the database name is tenant underscore xyz whatever is the domain name except the dot actually okay and the real domain name is this one so if you create any new user so the new user at the rate 123.com will be the uh, user email id okay so this is the tenant information and the db name is this one so let me create a database on this name manually i'm creating in this video in the coming video i'll be creating from a, a different application altogether so let me create a new database So you can see that database is created since the user collection is going to be same so let me copy the name of the collection which is this one you can see the collection is created let me put one default user in that Here I can say again admin. So default will be admin and the password will be let's say admin. 
okay because the default will be like first user admin later on we can disable this one and then create a new users at the rate xyz123 dot com you can see now user is created and now this time I will use this email ID and the password is obviously admin this time as well let me clear the cookie login now observe last time it was going inside this uh, master DB this time it should not so you got the domain name which is xyz123.com now which is not equal to default one so it's going inside here get tenant user so first time it will search in the cache so obviously it won't be there because just now I started that okay it was there by mistake let me clear the cache or let me assume this is not there because it was already there so I help hit this TV automatically you can see and uh, before that let me, let me clear this right away so there is an application I have already created so that I should explain you So there is a one more application I have created on that we on that also I have created a video like how to you know see the cache information what is there in all the DBs and all okay so since I have I was already trying this so that's why the cache is there in this reddish cache with the no expiry so let me run this application first so that I can clear the cache here also it's running on the same thing let me connect it okay so this is the same email ID so let me delete this actually okay so now it's deleted let me check okay this time cache is cleaned if I go back to the older application here if I try now it's coming as null so that means there is nothing in the DB I mean the cache DB so that's why I'm hitting the master database you can see xyz123 and right now also there is nothing I'll try refresh nothing so first I am taking the information from the DB and I got the connection information for that tenant this is the connection ID and the name and the domain name and the pass or what is so called that email ID you know, support email ID and all stuff like that and the connection is as well okay so after that what I'm doing I'm just saving into the cache this time if you see I'm calling one of the method called set so once that is set now the tenant information saved and then I will hit the tenant DB if you go inside you see it's going to tenant DB user management and there I'll be you know fetching the user information since user is we already added manually in the DB and we got that token now see it's authenticated if I proceed you got the token let me clear this again and I'll show you one more time clear cookie and if I refresh this one you see again the you know the data is there in the cached redis cache this i have manually created i'm like man, uh, create because the if you download from the internet that has some expiry time so you, you won't be able to use for a longer time so that is why this is the application i created this also you can download from a kit i will put the link also about this one and videos also there on the same let me authenticate it again put this email id same password login now this time you observe it should get the information from cache you see the cache is there so I'm not hitting the DB and you got the information of the tenant DB information and I'm just releasing the control now and you got the token again simple right all right so in the coming video I will be explaining you how to you know create a user create tenant and users also in the tenant so the most probably that will be in this uh, microservice too so in this video I covered only the client application making a call to the identity server using the Redis cache we are trying to get the tenant DB information and just generating the token and returning back to the client so that it can use for the all the future requests that's pretty much about this video thank you very much